Thank you, church. Uh, such a joy to be here again uh, to bring God's word. Thank you for praying. Uh, I, we were not well. We were down with typhoid uh, for a week and then we got recovered. Thank you for all your prayers. Uh, you prayed for us. You cooked for us. Uh, you uh, sent a lot of love and care. I really thank for, for, for all the love and care that you showed to us. Okay. Okay, so we will move on to the uh, sermon. If I ask you, what is the main purpose in life, in your Christian walk, what will you answer me? Just think about it. What will you answer me? If I ask you, what is the main purpose in my Christian walk, what will you answer? Immediately, many of you will say, my desire, my purpose is to become like Jesus, right? Most of you will say. And uh, scripturally, that is also right. Uh, I want to quote a few things. Uh, Romans 8.29 uh, For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. He chose them to become like his son. Ephesians 4.11-13 and uh, why did Jesus give apostles and teachers and many workers to the church? And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for edifying the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Till we come to a perfect man, to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. To become like Jesus. That is, that is what Bible also, the scripture also encourages us to do. And the last one, Colossians verses 1, 28. Verse 28, him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man. This is Paul speaking. In all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Jesus, perfect in Christ Jesus. So we know we from the scripture we understand that to become like Jesus, it is it is uh, 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 the scriptural calling, and uh, it is not only the, the the encouragement from the apostles or from God the Father, but it is also uh, the the call of our Savior. What did Jesus say uh, in Matthew eleven twenty nine? Everyone will say this verse: Take my yoke upon you, learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, you will find rest for your souls. So, learn from me. This is uh, uh, the, the topic for today. The topic for today is learn from Jesus. Learn from Jesus. That's the topic for today. So when I ask you another question, what do you like about Jesus? We know that there are so many things that we can learn from Jesus. But what do you like the most about Jesus? What will be your answer? Think about it. Bible says in Mark 13, Mark 3 verses 14, he chose the apostles to be with him. Why did he choose? He just wanted to be with him. Uh, miracles, ministry, that is also there. But the main reason that Jesus chose the apostles was he just wanted to be with them so that they can know about Jesus. They can know about the Son of God. So the, the 12 apostles, they lived with him. They, they, they traveled with him. They talked to him. They saw him face to face. And uh, they, they observed him. They, they ministered with him. And uh, when, when John was thinking about this, John the Apostle was thinking about this, he was overwhelmed by the fact that he lived with, he lived with Jesus. Uh, by 90 AD, all of the apostles, all of them except John was dead. They were persecuted and they were dead But by 90 AD. And he's writing this epistle, John 1, first John. Uh, so he says, and he's also going to, get arrested soon and he's, he'll be in the land of Patmos and he'll also die there. So he says, uh, I just, I want you to 
capture how many times he uses the word seen him heard him uh, received from him just i want to read out you just observe what how much how excited he is john we proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning whom we have heard and seen we saw him with our own eyes touched him with our own hands he is the word of life he is the one who is life itself was revealed to us we have seen him now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the, he is the one who is eternal life he was with the father he was revealed to us we proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard how many times he is saying seen and heard so that we may have fellowship with us verse 4 we are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy this is the message that we heard from jesus so he was unable to control the joy that oh actually i lived with jesus and uh, i was able to when i read that i was able to understand the joy of apostle john and also many other apostles so what we are going to do look at is we will look at from the gospel accounts we look at the three main characteristics of jesus and we learn uh, from that so three outstanding characteristics of jesus number 1 Jesus and his meekness Jesus and his meekness this, this picture uh, if you've taken it from the chosen series uh, this picture says that says it all the the humility and meekness of Jesus learn from me i am humble and lowly in heart when we start reading the gospels uh, you will not miss the humility of Jesus do you agree right from the uh, matthew or luke wherever you read Uh, we see the humility of jesus jesus uh, is the jesus birth was foretold thousands of years back he, even moses talked about jesus so he is the exp- the long expected awaited messiah he is the 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 king the ultimate king the ultimate priest the ultimate prophet when when daniel saw the 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 vision about jesus Uh, he said he said that jesus his kingdom is going to destroy all the earthly kingdoms completely uproot the earthly kingdoms so that jesus is coming into the world and then when you look at when you read the gospel account you see that that grand uh, the posture that was in the old testament but when you look at the 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 birth account of jesus he was born in a simple manger do you see that nobody no no king's birth was announced like jesus's birth no king in this earth maybe people when they when they were born they people don't even recognize that that boy would become a king but jesus's birth was announced thousands of years back that was a grand proclamation but when he was born he was born as a humble in a humble house in a simple house Luke verse two and seven. She wrapped him, uh, it's nagly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for Jesus. Can you imagine? There is no place for Jesus, uh, a, a lodge, a, a small place to be born. He was in a manger. He was uh, in the in the place where all the straws and the thing, the fodder and kept for animals. He was born there. The simplicity of Jesus' birth. Jesus had a simple birth secondly jesus was jesus birth was announced to simple people he is the king of kings he is going to rule the whole world and he is he is the son of god but his birth was announced to simple people who uh, where did uh, what did the angel whom did the angels announce he announced to the lowly shepherds by 400 years it was a complete silent period and everyone was expecting the 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 coming of the messiah uh, people somehow understood that messiah will be born that is why when 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 herod uh, asked him uh, the 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 religious leaders immediately he said messiah will be born in bethlehem so they know that the the coming of messiah is in the corner but jesus but god didn't announce it to the elite the the proud people he announced it to simple people like shepherds his birth was announced to lowly shepherds 
not only that jesus was given to poor parents did you see i when jesus when 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 a bo- when a jewish boy is born first born son they have to give back to god first born son is not yours god god wants the child so you have to sacrifice the child to him you can't kill the child but you have to give a replacement for the sacrifice replacement so a, a, a goat or or a lamb or a, if you are a rich you can give a calf so that has to be uh, given so you have to sacrifice and then say that god i give back my child give back my son to you so that's called redeeming back so when jesus had to give back when moses and when joseph and mary they when they had to give jesus back so they went to the temple they didn't have that that much money to give a lamp so they gave two turtle doves there is a provision in the old testament if you are very poor you can give two turtle doves turtle doves are like pretty much very simple or very easy to buy can you see he was not given to a royal parents he was given to simple parents meekness of jesus it still the list goes on he was given to a insignificant town he was given to an insignificant town where did jesus come from what was jesus hometown nazareth nazareth so when you when when in those days naz when they when they say nazareth they will immediately say nothing good comes from nazareth it's like a proverb even in india we have places like that right when we say some place that's good for nothing it's been underdeveloped for so many centuries there is curse in that place that's what uh, sometimes we indians say so we can also imagine that kind of a setup there so immediately when they say nazareth there people said that this is useless this nothing good comes from there there is a reason for that because nazareth uh, Na- where is nazareth nazareth is in galilee in the north in the north region in the in the jewish culture the south region is known for all the spirituality so all the prophets the priest the king everyone came from judea not from galilee so uh, people just despised uh, galilee and um, and galilee is called galilee of gentiles jews gentiles mean they will not even go near that place their shadow should not even fall on them they will wash their hands so kind of like untouchables but jesus was given to that place god the father in his sovereign wisdom he sent that my son will not be in judea my son will be in galilee my son will be among the poor my son will be among the despised people jesus was sent to insignificant town okay let's look at jesus mission statement uh, uh, this was isaiah 611 the spirit of the lord <coughs> six uh, previous uh, the spirit of the lord is upon me for the lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor good news to the rich or the elite no the mission statement itself says that god has a big stake for the poor the gospel is actually pastor often says that pa- the gospel is inclined towards poor it is not to the rich because poor people they have a hunger and thirst naturally for the things of god when when john was waiting uh john knew john john is the one who bap- baptized jesus he knew that he is the son of god but he had some doubt in his mind in the later part of his ministry that is he really the messiah am am i doing am i doing the right thing because i am proclaiming that he is the messiah but what happens if he is not so he had doubt in his in his in his mind in the later part of his ministry so he sends his disciples so he is asking are you the one the are you the coming one or should we have to look for somebody else what did jesus reply he replied the blind receive sight the lame walk the lepers cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them the poor have the gospel preached to them 
so the mark of messiah the mark of jesus's ministry is towards the poor jesus was given to the poor jesus uh, he is entering jerusalem um, the last week of his ministry he is entering jerusalem he is the 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 awaited king he is how he is coming look at zechariah 99 rejoice o people of zion shout in triumph o people of jerusalem look your king is coming to you he is righteous and victorious he is humble riding on a donkey donkey's colt no king comes on a donkey have you ever read uh, in the in the history that any king came on a donkey no but no king comes on a donkey king usually king they come on a horse uh, not even one horse they come on a chariot it will be like 10 6 8 horses they'll come on a chariot they will prove that they will prove their authority and their power and in india the king comes on a very big elephant right so nobody comes comes on a donkey but look at our jesus he comes on a donkey meekness of jesus meekness of jesus when jesus performed miracles he said that don't tell anyone don't tell anyone many times we read in the scripture that he doesn't want to uh, seek public attention he just want to play it quiet safe he has uh, he goes to, with his disciples and he sees the disciples see him the father god talking to talking to jesus along with moses and elijah nobody uh, nothing has ever happened uh, mankind like that father himself spoke uh, talking to jesus and then when he comes down he says hey guys please don't tell he never want to seek public attention and many miracles uh, jesus is raising jairus his daughter nobody has done that and he says that please don't tell anyone he never seeks public attention he is that simple maybe a reason for that because pe- jesus doesn't want people to come to him for wrong reasons if they know that he is the 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 son of god he is the the true real messiah they would try to make him as a political king against the roman empire and jesus doesn't want that he is very fixed his mission was fixed to serve the to preach the gospel to the poor and to go home when god, whenever god calls him home that was jesus's ministry so he never sought popularity for himself he never sought public glad for himself the meekness of jesus look at jesus's message his message was very simple he is explaining the most uh, important truth for mankind the salvation of man and look at how jesus uh, spoke from the parables he spoke from the seed everyone can understand that seed he spoke from uh, scattering farmer scattering the seed he spoke from mustard seed he spoke from the parable of the yeast women will easily understand that and he spoke about the treasure of a pearl people will hide something they will find treasures these are and, and he spoke about the fishing net so there's some common things he picked up and he spoke so why he spoke very simple because his mainly his listeners were poor people so his heart was for the poor so his message was a simple message and who are his friends jesus chose his disciples if jesus wanted he could have just called gamaliel or he could have just called nicodemus nicodemus he would have performed few miracles to him and proved that he is the messiah and nicodemus and gamaliel would would send the best of his students to jesus as disciples but he chose simple poor fishermen as his disciples can you even imagine that the peter the the unstable peter he is going to be the next leader after jesus he trusted people poor people the meekness of jesus 
one last thing I want to tell. The Isaiah 42 verse 1, 1 to 3. This is God the Father speaking about Jesus. Hear my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out, nor raise his voice in the streets. Jesus will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. Jesus is the wisdom personified. Proverbs 8. He is the, the, the wisdom of God. He is the wisdom from God. So when he spoke uh, to the religious leaders, even at the age of 12, he was so well versed with the scripture. The, the religious leaders cannot stand up to his caliber. He, Jesus had such a command and great understanding of the scriptures. But what did Jesus, how did Jesus react when, when he was on the cross? He said that, huh, he saved the whole world, but he is unable to save him himself. If Jesus was an angry man, he would have just punished them right there in a split second for saying that kind of a statement. It's a blasphemous statement, speaking against the Son of God. He could have just brought, struck down, struck all of the religious leaders with leprosy, like, like, like Miriam. When he spoke against Moses, he was struck with leprosy. Or, or he would have just called the fire from heaven and then burned everything like Elijah did. Or even, even very cruel was he could have just commanded the earth to open and then earth would have split and then everyone would have gone down like, like uh, Korah and his friends we read in Moses. So Jesus had that kind of power and authority to punish his enemies. But he didn't say that. He didn't do anything. He was quiet like a sheep before his shearers. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice. What did Jesus reply to Peter? Don't you know that my father will send 12 legions, there were 12 disciples, 12 legions if I just ask for him. One legion is equal to 6,000 soldiers. 12 legion is 72,000 soldiers. If Jesus had just asked the father, God would have sent 72,000 angels to come and protect Jesus. One angel killed 185,000 soldiers in the Old Testament we read. Just one angel. Jesus would have asked God, God would have sent 12, 72,000 angels at his service. In a split second, he could have done that, but he was very quiet on the cross. He will not raise his voice. He will not act arrogantly. Bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. I love this verse. Bruce itself is very fragile, right? If the wind blows, it will, it will break, it will, it will just fall off. It's very fragile. But Jesus is saying, I will not break the bruised reed. Meaning, Jesus will not finish off people by saying that he is useless. There is, there is nothing profitable in her. She, is, she will not just finish off people. He will just go to the last end and help people. That's what it says. Meaning, Bruce did he will not break. He is tender and compassionate. Still a long way off, the father saw his son. And then he was filled with compassion. He ran to him and hugged him and loved him and kissed him and gave him new clothes. He didn't say that this fellow squandered my wealth. This fellow brought shame to my name. He didn't say that. Bruce to read, he will not break. Meekness of Jesus. Smoldering wick, he will not snuff out. Already the candle is, is going to put, it's going to be off. Anytime it will be off. This person has no strength. He is useless. He will, he will not just say that anyway, that, that candle is going to off. I don't, want, I don't want to waste my time on that candle, on that lamp. So I will just quench it off. I'll just put it off. He will not do that. He will take care of it. He will trim the candle. He will, he will take care of the lamp that it will shine brighter. He will pour oil. He will make sure that we will shine brighter. It, 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 it reflects our lives. Bruce Reed, he will not break. 
smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Jesus had a simple birth. Jesus' birth was announced to simple people. Jesus was given to poor parents, simple and poor parents. He was sent to simple and despised town to be raised. His message was simple. He chose simple people as disciples. Can you see the meekness of Jesus? Meekness of Jesus. So I want to ask you, how Jesus' meekness will impact your life, is impacting your life. Are you like Jesus in meekness? Are you like Jesus in his humility? Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who are meek. Just want to uh, put you in some questions for reflection. How will I know that I am really meek? You can ask these questions. Am I being prideful? Am I arrogant in my dealings? Am I always boasting myself? Is my heart hard towards others? Am I behaving rudely? How do you react when your ego is hurt? Am I too proud of my social status? Am I being stubborn in my conduct? So if you answer these questions, you will know that your heart is meek or not. Meekness of Jesus. Second, second characteristics. Firstly, we saw the meekness of Jesus. Second is Jesus and his compassion. Jesus and his compassion. I love watching the Chosen series. All the emotions and Jesus' emotions and how he interacted with people, it was beautifully captured in that movie series. This picture says it all. Compassion is love and action. When Jesus lived on this earth, he sympathized with people. He, uh, he just didn't just heal people, but he, his heart went out to them. That's why he said uh, a doctor needs, uh, a doctor is needed for the sick, not a healthy person. Let's look a few incidents in, the, in, in Jesus' ministry and observe his compassion. Jesus and his compassion. Matthew 8, 1 to 3. When Jesus came down from the mountain, said a large crowd followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, he reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. A lot of things are mentioned in these three verses. Can you imagine the plight of a person with leprosy? I've gone to a TLM, Trinity Leprosy Mission in Allahabad. I, I could see the plight. According to the law of Moses, they are not allowed to dwell in the residential quarters. They have to live in the outside, outside the town. They can, can't come in contact with people. People can't touch them. If they touch, you will be unclean for the whole day. You cannot touch other people. So they have to live in a, in a faraway places. And if, if someone happened to go that side, they have to close their mouth and they have to tear their clothes and say that unclean, unclean. That was the plight of people with leprosy. Large crowds follow Jesus. Suddenly this man comes. Can you imagine the reaction of the crowd? How they, how they would have reacted? They would have shouted at him. Hey, why are you here? Just go away from this place. We don't want you to be here. The, the rabbi is here. Don't corrupt him. Don't pollute him. All kind of words they would have just smeared at him. But look at Jesus. He, obviously he can't come near Jesus. He will be at a very long distance. And then he, is, he said he knelt down before Jesus and he would have shouted, Jesus, please heal me. If you are willing, you heal me. So Jesus walks to this place. Would have walked closer to him. Obviously he is unable to look up Look, even look up and see Jesus' face was looking down. Jesus would have knelt down, 
would have been stooped down with him and he would have touched him. Maybe this fellow, nobody would have touched him for many years. Right? He's, he's kind of like untouchable. But Jesus reached out and touched him. How he would have felt that? How he would have felt that? Can you imagine? That after a very long time, a rabbi like Jesus, he is coming and touching me. And that he is overwhelmed and maybe he is crying. And within a split second, his dark patches and white patches of in the skin, it starts to disappear. And he is unable to react. He, maybe he is crying. Maybe for the first time he is feeling the breeze, the cold breeze in his skin. His skin was dead, but now it has become alive. So he is overwhelmed with the power of the miracle. Maybe he is crying, like this picture. And then, I really like how they, how they saw him chosen. Jesus immediately hugs him. Can you imagine the son of God hugging a leper? Compassion, love in action, the compassion of Jesus. For Jesus, it's not just about healing. If he wanted, he would have just said that, from the distance, he would have just said that, be healed, and then he would have just walked away. That, that was not Jesus' main thing. It's not about healing. It's about showing compassion and love for people who are in need. It's, it says that by just touching him, he, he said he, a nonverbal gesture communicated to them that God is interested in me. I am not untouchable. I can understand your plight, my son. I want to help you. I want to heal you. That is the message that Jesus communicated to him when he touched him. Jesus is compassionate. Next is the, the story of a woman who had the issue of 12 years. For 12 years. He is also a very similar story. Kind of like untouchable. If you are in that state, people cannot touch you because if they touch you, you will also become unclean according to the law of Moses. He quietly comes and he touches the hem of his garment and then he, he just got healed. Jesus would have just ignored and he would have just gone. But he, he is asking, he stops in between, the whole crowd is following, Jairus is waiting and he stops in between and he says that, who touched me? Why he, Jesus wants to put him in a public spot and embarrass him? The reason is not embarrass her. Jesus wants to recognize her faith and appreciate her faith. The daughter, he calls daughter. The compassion of Jesus. So it's not about he wants to show that he really is compassionate towards her. He just don't want, he doesn't want to embarrass her, but he wants to acknowledge the beautiful faith that she had. Matthew was 14, 13 to 14. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. When he saw the huge crowd, he had compassion on them and healed the sick. Matthew 9, 35, 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. He understood that they needed Jesus. Compassion of Jesus. Hebrews 5, 4.15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have the one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. He is the one who can empathize with our, with our weakness. Another story I like is geez, how Jesus treats the widow of nine. Nine's, the, the widow's son is dead. They're carrying him to the, 
for for funeral jesus comes along with a big crowd he comes nobody is asking jesus to heal or raise him up jesus saw her i really like what it is stated verse luke it's it's in luke chapter 7 when the lord saw her he his heart went out to her and he said don't cry then he went up and touched the buyer they were carrying him and the bearer stood still they didn't know what to do jesus is stopping them he said young man i said you get up the dead man sat up and began to talk and jesus gave him back to his mother all the focus was on that widow because he jesus understood the pain of a widow maybe he doesn't have any other sons or husband to take care of her jesus understood the pain jesus is focused focus was not on the man but on her the compassion of jesus i just want to ask you how do you respond to people who need compassion do you really can really people see that you are compassionate towards them bible says be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as god in christ forgave you ephesians 4:32 therefore god as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourself with compassion and kindness colossians 3:12 the biblical call is that we also should be like jesus christ compassionate like him i just want to leave with few questions so that you will really know whether you are compassionate or compassionate or not am i showing coldness to someone just ask yourself these questions will help you understand whether you have compassion or not am i being insensitive to others needs am i being heartless to someone especially people who are really vulnerable am i being preoccupied with my own life am i being self obsessed am i being sensitive to the suffering of others am i being generous this will tell us that whether we are really compassionate or not jesus and his compassion lastly and finally jesus and his passion for god's word i really love this jesus and his passion for god's word for jesus doing the will of god is the paramount importance do you agree for jesus doing the will of god is the paramount importance in his life john was un- he, john is feeling unworthy to baptize jesus he is resisting jesus i have to be baptized by you but what did jesus say to him it should be done for we must carry out all that god requires jesus doesn't have to get baptized by john is the sinless spotless lamp of god but he had to do this because that is god's will for jesus isaiah 11:3 he will delight in obeying the lord he will not judge by appearance or make decision based on hearsay righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the shash around his waist that was jesus he will delight in obeying the lord he will delight in obeying the lord what did jesus say to the devil when he was tempted no the scripture says like this second time another question another temptation he's again saying no the scripture says like this third time he says and the devil puts him another question he says that no the scripture also says like this jesus was fully filled with the scripture even at the age of 12 as i told he was fully well versed with the scripture 12 year old boy can you imagine that he's fully with the word of god so john mary and joseph they were searching jesus it's been 3 days they couldn't find this boy jesus he said to them why did you seek me did you not know that 
I must be about my father's business. What is, what is father's business to Jesus? It is studying the scripture and understanding the scripture is father's business to Jesus. During the Passover festival, the best of the rabbis will come to Jerusalem for discussion, for religious teachings, Passover festival, the best of the rabbis in the whole Israel, they will come to Jerusalem. But Jesus was talking to, uh, Jesus would have been talking to religious leaders like Nicodemus standard, like Gamaliel standards. And they were shocked and astonished about Jesus' knowledge and understanding of the scripture. 12 year old boy. How could Jesus get that kind of knowledge when he was even at the age of 12? I believe the credit or the, the major path goes to Joseph and Mary. I believe that. Jesus would have, he would, he would, she would have rigorously trained Jesus to study the scripture. Just look at uh, the, the Mary's praise. Mary was pregnant with Jesus and he goes to Elizabeth's house. You remember the story? So he, they, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they started praising God. And uh, it's called the famous, the Magnificat. If you read the Magnificat, you will understand the, the scriptural understanding of Mary. 16, 17 year old girl, she had that much understanding of the word of God. He, the, if you read, he, she, she refers back to 1 Samuel, she refers back to 2 Samuel, then Proverbs, Psalms, Job, Isaiah and Genesis. 17 year old girl, she had that understanding of the word of God when she, when she had Jesus. So it is not just a random thing, uh, just something came in Jesus' head and became, he became illuminated. No. He would have got a very rigorous training from Joseph and Mary. Yes, of course, Jesus had the spirit of understanding and wisdom, Isaiah. But along with that, Jesus would have got the, received the training of a Jewish boy. So the question is, what are we pumping in our children's mind nowadays? I was talking to one of our music teachers from our church. He was telling parents are so bent on teaching their children with so many things, they don't even have time to rest. Tuition for all the classes, all the subjects, music, all music, not one instrument, all music instruments, and then not one sport, many sports, this, that is church that is the way of the world we don't have to follow the pattern of the world but if you have the mind of Christ you can have a transformed thinking know what is important for your children I really wish I had in my, in my youthful days I had spent given more time to God's word I was also like that 4 o'clock 4.30 I'll get up I'll go for max tuition 5, five to 7 was my max tuition I will run because I wanted to score centum in my max. And I, after that evening, science tuition. And then uh, up between science and English, between science and maths, English tuition. <laughs> Rubbish, I really feel. <laughs> rubbish, clearly rubbish. I, I wish I could have spent those times in studying the scripture and understanding the word of God. What will, what will I gain if I gain the whole world but lose my soul? <clears throat> Jesus fasted for 40 days. How did Jesus got that idea that he should fast for 40 days? Who fasted for 40 days in the Old Testament? Moses, right? Moses. So Jesus would have read the scripture. He knew the experience that Moses had, the, the uninterrupted fellowship with God for, for 40 days. Moses forgot to eat or drink for 40 days. Jesus wanted to have that experience. God already said that you are my beloved son. I am well pleased. There is no need for Jesus to please the father by fasting. But Jesus decided that no, I will go and spend time with my father. Moses had a bigger ministry. He had to lead the Israel for the next 40 years. 
I have more bigger ministry than Moses. I have to spend time with God. That was the passion of Jesus for his word, to spend time with his father. So for Jesus, scripture was the inspiration. Just uh, look at some of the scriptures uh, from Matthew, chap just in chapter 21 itself. So many passages, Jesus is referring back to the scriptures. We can see the passion that he had for the, script, uh, for the Old Testament scriptures. For Jesus, the Old Testament was the whole Bible. Isaiah, uh, uh, Matthew 21, 13, he said to them, the scriptures declare that the temple will be called the house of prayer. He was so angry that they were, they were selling things in the, in the, in the, inside the temple. And then he said, he remembered that. That was in Isaiah 56, 7. He remembered that and he said that my temple will be called the house of prayer. Maybe in that morning, Jesus would have meditated on that verse before he went to the temple. He immediately spoke that word. And the, the religious leaders were so angry because the little children were calling him as Messiah. They were so angry. It's blasphemy. And then Jesus immediately said that, haven't you ever read the scripture? For they say, you have taught children and infants to give you praise. Immediately he connected with Psalm 8. Jesus again asked, Did, didn't you ever read in the scriptures that the stone the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone? Jesus knew that they would reject him, but he will become the cornerstone. Haven't you read? Jesus had read that scripture, Psalm 118, 22. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. For Jesus, everything was about the scripture. Fulfilling the scripture was his main thing. How could Jesus knew that his disciples would desert him? Can he even imagine that a guy like Peter will deny Jesus? Forget about denying. Can he even curse Jesus? No. He is a loyal disciple. But how did Jesus know that his disciples would desert him? Because he knew the scripture. That's why he said tonight, on the way to the, to the mountain, he said, Jesus told them, tonight all of you will desert me for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Jesus knew that his disciples will run away from him. Jesus also knew that Judas would uh, betray him for 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah, it is in Zechariah 11, 12, that it was, that was valued by the, by the people of Israel and purchased the potter's field as the Lord directed. He would have meditated on that verse during that Thursday morning. Jesus knew the scriptures. Jesus is in the cross. He's unable to even breathe. His, his wrist was broken. So he can't even have a hold and hang on the cross. His wrist was broken. He was beaten, badly bruised on his body. Uh, even his nails was on. He was just standing on one single nail. He's, he was lifting up his body and breathing on a single nail. He was unable to, he was in the, in the peak of agony and pain. In that time, he says, to the fulfillment, to the fulfillment of the scriptures, he said, I thirst. He, even on the cross, Jesus is thinking about, I want to fulfill the word of God. He could have just kept quiet, but he said that, no, I have to say this. So to fulfill this, what the scripture told about Jesus, he said, I thirst. John 19, 28, he referred back to 20, Psalm 22, 15. Look, the beauty of Jesus. For Jesus, everything was about the word of God. Jesus and God's word are inseparable. I just want to leave you with this last uh, one Bible verse, beautiful Bible verse. Hebrews 10, 5 to 7. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, meaning just on the day of Christmas, he would have, he said, Jesus, the son of God said this thing to God the Father, maybe in heaven. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. 
in the volume of the book it is written of me to do you to do your will o god that was the heart cry of jesus he made a commitment to god father that i will do your will no matter what happens this was uh, this truth was captured by john that jesus and the and god's word are inseparable this truth was captured by john the disciple that's why he says when he writes to when he opens the the book of john he he writes jesus is the word of god nobody has uh, wrote that earlier even in the first epistle he writes he's the word of life the word of god he got that the truth because he lived with jesus jesus and the word of god are inseparable that's why he is called the word of god the logos for jesus doing the will of god is the food for him he cannot live but by living but by doing the will of god how about you can you honestly say that you love jesus if you say you love jesus you will obey his commandments because jesus said in john 14 if you love me you will obey my commandments most of us are in our christian walk for for many years so we all know it's all in the, it's all here but it does not come down to the heart heart level we know what what god wants us to do in many things but we still want to don't want to do that because it does not the word of god has not touched our heart so we love sin more than we love jesus we love sin more than we love jesus so we fail every time human efforts cannot help us so we can't create a change in ourselves by our own by our own nature because the bible says human effort accomplishes nothing but the very words that i have spoken to you are life and spirit john 663 so my prayer is that can we all say this prayer like jesus said to his father god you do not want you did not want sacrifices and sin offerings but you have given me a body to offer god has given us a body to offer you were not pleased with burnt offerings or other other offerings for sin then i said look lord i have come to do your will o oh god can we all say this prayer to jesus to god that god i have come to do your will i have come to do your will so we have seen three things jesus and his meekness jesus and his compassion jesus and his passion for god's word may god help us and bless us and to be like him in our walk with god Thank you.